Hello everyone, this is Glenda and welcome back to Creative Grandma. Today's tutorial is going to be for pattern number 701. This is called the Springtime Bath Mat Rug. So today's tutorial is going to be using two strands of yarn held together and a large size hook and we're going to create this beautiful textured rug. So let me zoom up closer and let you actually see this big puffy stitch we're going to be using. This was one of my stitch of the week called the rug stitch. We're using a big puff stitch mixed with a single crochet and it just makes this wonderful little bath mat. I'll be right back and I'll tell you everything you need for the material list for this project. So for our project today, you're going to need six skeins of Ice Yarns Magic Bulky Weight Yarn. This is a number five bulky weight, 100% acrylic. There's 100 grams, 3.53 ounces, 130 meters or 142 yards per skein in each skein. Now this color here that I'm using is color number FNT2-49335 and it is called the White Orchid Lilac and Green Multicolor. And then you're going to need two skeins of the classic Chunky. This is a five bulky weight yarn as well. This is 100% acrylic, 100 grams, 3.53 ounces, 133 meters, 145 yards, and this is color number FNT254535 Lilac. So six skeins of the multicolor for the inside of the rug, and then two skeins for this outside border. Now, if you want to make your mat or rug longer or bigger, then you have to adjust your yarn order and order more yarn and depends on the size you want. So just if you want to increase the size, please order more yarn because this would look beautiful as a runner in front of your door. Just a really nice pattern with this textured stitch. I also wanted to show you the Magic Bulky only has three colors. This is the color we used here, the white, lilac, orchid, and green. But they also have two other colors. They have this one, this center one here is called the yellow, purple, pink, orange, blue shades, and that is this one here. It's just a beautiful blending of soft pastel colors. And that is color number F. I, have, I don't have my glasses on, so sorry. It's FNT24873. And then they also have this really bright one, which I think would be so wonderful for a child's room, a toddler's room. They love those bright, sunny colors. And this one is called Yellow, Turquoise, Purple, Orange, and Fuchsia. This is color number FNT24893. So three wonderful colors you can choose from. And then... I wanted to show you this yarn here. If you decide to go with a different color, they also have this beautiful yellow that would go with this one. It would also go good with this one. So they have all different colors. I'm just going to show you some of the other colors available. Just an extraordinary large amount of accent colors you can match up with that multicolor. So that gives you an idea of some of the other colors they have. Now I'll have the link to Ice Yarns in my description box for this Magic Bulky and for this Classic Chunky. So you can just click on those links if you would like to use the same yarn. You're also going to need a large hook. This is a size N or 10 millimeter hook. So a big hook. You're also going to need a pack of the non-slip rug underlay. This you put underneath your rug so you do not slide. And this is very important. You never want to use a yarn rug on a tile or wood floor because if you tramp on it, it could slide out from under you and cause injury. So please grab yourself a pack of this rug underlay. I've got this pack here for only a dollar at the Dollar Tree. So check out Dollar Tree and pick yourself up some of these for only a dollar. They're wonderful. So that's what you need for this tutorial. So I'll be right back 
and we'll get this project started. To begin our project, make sure that your yarn is balled up with both strands together so when it's coming off the strand it acts as one and it's so much easier. Now when I'm doing this pattern I'm going to act like this is one strand and we're going to work our stitches just like it's one strand. To begin we're going to chain 34. Yarn over the hook, pull it through the loop on your hook, that creates your first chain. Yarn over, pull through, that's two, yarn over and pull through, that's three. Continue in that manner until you have a chain with 34 chains. I'll be back and we'll start row one. I have my chain with 34 chains and now we're going to begin row one. We're going to skip the first chain, we're going to insert our hook into the second chain from hook and work a single crochet. Yarn over the hook, pull it back through that chain, yarn over the hook, and pull it through two loops. That's your single crochet. You're going to insert into the next chain, work a single crochet, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet, and you're just going to work one single crochet in each chain across your foundation chain. So continue and work one single crochet in each chain across. I will meet you at the end of row one. I'm over at the end of row one. Row one is finished and you should have one single crochet in each chain across. Now we started with a chain 34 and because you're working that first single crochet into that second chain you should have a total of 33 single crochet across. So let's begin row 2. Now row 2 and 3 will be our repeat rows. It's just a simple two row repeat for this pattern which makes it really really easy. So to begin row 2 we're going to chain 1 and you're going to turn your work. We're going to skip this first chain. We're going to insert into that first single crochet stitch and work a single crochet. So for the repeat pattern across our rug, we're going to work a puff stitch which consists of two triple crochet, leaving the last loop on the hook and then pulling through all loops on your hook. And then we're going to work a single crochet and we're going to repeat that across. So let's begin. Yarn over the hook twice. You're going to insert it into the next stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull it back through that stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull it through two loops. Yarn over the hook, pull it through two loops. You're leaving that last loop on the hook and remember each loop has two strands of yarn. So it's easier if I just say it as if it was one strand so it doesn't confuse you. We're going to yarn over twice. You're going to insert into that same stitch that you just worked. Yarn over the hook, pull it back through that stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull it through two loops only. Yarn over the hook and pull it through two loops. You have three loops remaining. Yarn over the hook and pull it through all three loops. You just made your first puff stitch. So what happens is we're going to work a single crochet into the next stitch and it's going to pull these stitches down and create that puff. So Take your hook, go down into the very next stitch, and work a single crochet. And this is how we get that nice puffy pattern for our rug. That was the end of the repeat. So let's start to repeat again. Yarn over the hook twice. You're going to go into the next stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull it back through that stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull it through two loops only yarn over the hook and pull it through two loops. You have two loops remaining on your hook. 
yarn over twice, insert into that same stitch you just worked, yarn over the hook, pull it back through, yarn over the hook, pull it through two loops only, yarn over the hook and pull it through two loops only. You just work two triple crochet leaving the last loop of each stitch on your hook and you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Now to create the puff stitch we're going to come down and work a single crochet into this next stitch. Sometimes it's easier if you take your finger and push them forward and bring your hook down. Insert into that next stitch and work a single crochet. And it's just creating those nice puffs, makes it nice and cushiony for your rug. That was the end of the repeat. Let's do it again. Yarn over the hook twice, insert into the next stitch, work a triple crochet, leaving that last loop on the hook. You have two loops remaining on your hook. Yarn over twice, insert into that same stitch, work a triple crochet, and you're leaving the last loop of that stitch on your hook. So now you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Take your finger, push them forward, take your hook, bend those stitches down, insert into the next stitch, and work a single crochet. That is the end of the repeat. I'm going to show you one more time. You're going to yarn over the hook twice, insert into the next stitch, yarn over the hook, pull it back through that stitch, yarn over the hook, pull it through two loops only, yarn over the hook and pull it through two loops only. You leave two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over twice, insert into that same stitch just worked, yarn over, pull back through, yarn over, pull through two loops only, yarn over and pull through two loops. You have three loops remaining on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. You can take your finger and push them forward and bend them down, insert into the next stitch and work a single crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. And you can see how those puff stitches are forming for the cushion. See how nice and high and when you're stepping on that rug how nice and soft and cushiony it will be. Go ahead and click back on the video. Start where I say this is the repeat and where I say this is the end of the repeat. And you're going to work one puff stitch which is two triple crochet leaving the last loop of each stitch on the hook yarn over, pull through all those loops on your hook, and then single crochet into the next stitch. When you get to the end of your row, you should be ending with a single crochet into that last stitch. I'll meet you at the end of row two. I'm over at the end of row two, and this is what your work should look like. We started with a single crochet. We worked our puff stitch, a single crochet into the center of those puff stitch, puff stitch, single crochet, puff stitch, and you should have ended with a single crochet. So that is your work. And now we're going to begin row three, which is another really simple single crochet row. So let me zoom up. We're going to begin row three and we're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work. Now when you're working on the back side, we will be working one single crochet in each stitch. So because you're working on the wrong side, sometimes it's harder to see those stitches. But because the stitches are so big, you can see here's a stitch, here's a stitch. Right on the top of your work, you can see those stitches. Or you can turn it slightly and follow those stitches across the top of your work. Now I'm right on white on white so let me pull it over here where you can see. When you're looking at your work you can see those little heart shapes. Those are your stitches. Just turn your work if you need to and you can find the top of your stitch. We're going to skip that chain one space. You're going to insert your hook into the top of that first stitch and work a single crochet. 
insert into the next stitch and work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch and work a single crochet. Just be careful that when you're working these stitches you don't go into the top of the puff stitch. You only want to go into the top of the stitch itself, right under those top two loops. So insert into the top of the next stitch and work a single crochet. Continue working one single crochet in each stitch across. I will meet you at the end of row three. I'm over at the end of row three and this is what your work should look like. Now this is the wrong side of your work. Your wrong side of your work is going to be nice and smooth and flat. And when you turn your work, it's going to have your puff stitches. So that was the end of your repeat. So all you need to do now is just click back on the video. You're going to repeat rows two and row three. 21 more times. So if you need help, just click back on the video, repeat rows two and three, 21 more times. And when you get done, you will be on row 45. So I'm going to continue working on my rug and I will meet you at the end of row 45. I'm at the end of row 45 and this is what your rug should look like. The design will change depending on how you wound your yarn on the ball. I chose to make sure I didn't match the colors. I just wanted an overall effect. So it changes in whichever way the yarn is coming out. So let's measure. Your rug should measure approximately about 20 to 20 and a half inches wide depending on your tension. And there's no you know, right or wrong measurement on this because some of us crochet tighter. I'm a tight crocheter, so your rug might be wider. And then my rug measures about 28 and a fourth to 28 and a half inches long. Now this is just a regular little bath mat I'm making for in front of the shower. So if you want your rug larger, then you can do so. Just increase those stitches. This has a stitch multiple of two. Just increase your stitch multiple. You can make it longer if you wish. If you want to make it a runner, just make sure you buy that appropriate yarn. So I'm just going to turn my rug over. I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to fasten this off because I'm getting ready to put my border on. And again, if you want to make your rug longer, you can do so if you want to make a longer runner. When I fasten off, I chain two, one, to, I pull my hook up and pull that yarn out. I grab this end of the yarn. I take my fingers and I just pull down and it makes a nice secure knot. And then I'll weave my ends in on the back where it's nice and smooth up and down in through those stitches. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab my border color and we're going to get the border started and finish our rug. To start our border, we're going to take our contrasting color and we're going to turn our work so the right side is facing and you can see your puff stitches and we're going to go back to the last row worked and we're going right up into this corner single crochet stitch. So let me zoom in. I'm going to take my hook and we're going to insert it into this first single crochet stitch in the top right hand corner. I'm taking about a four to five inch length of yarn. I'm going to leave that in the back. I'm going to grab where I fastened off. I'm going to hold it right up against my work. I'm going to grab my new color and pull it through. We're going to chain one. We're going to insert back into that first stitch. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my hook underneath my ends and I'm going to crochet these ends in right across my work and that saves weaving in your ends. You're going to work a single crochet into that first stitch and you're going to work a single crochet in each stitch across the top of your rug. Insert into that next stitch, work a single crochet and work right over your ends. Insert into the next stitch. Make sure the hook is underneath the ends. 
and then work your single crochet right over top the ends and right through your stitch. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet over your ends and just continue across. Work one single crochet in each stitch across. I will meet you at the corner when you work your last single crochet here and then we'll work our corner and work down the end. So go ahead and repeat one single crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the corner. I'm over at the end of the first side of our border and you can see we worked one single crochet in each stitch across to our corner. We're getting ready to turn the corner and we're going to work down our length. To turn the corner we're going to chain two. One, two. Turn your rug and we're going to be working down the length. We're going to be working in each row and stitch down to the next corner. So when you look at your work, this is our single crochet row and we're going to go right back into that same stitch that we worked our last single crochet. This will create our first stitch going down the length and we're going to work a single crochet. You're going to jump to the next row and again we're working over the post of the last stitch in each row. So insert your hook into that post of that ending single crochet of our puff row and work a single crochet. Insert your hook into the last single crochet of the single crochet row, the next row, and work a single crochet. And we're working right over the end stitch, right over the post of the last stitch of each row. So insert into the end stitch of the next row and work a single crochet. Insert into the end stitch of the ending single crochet row and work a single crochet. So go ahead and work one single crochet in each row and stitch down to the next corner and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the next corner. I just worked one single crochet in each row and stitch down the length and we're now down to the next corner. So I'm going to zoom up and then we're going to be working across the bottom of our foundation chain. So to turn the corner, we're going to chain two, one, two. Now on my rug, the first stitch is a little crunched down and tight. So you look and you'll see this is our first puff stitch here and we have a single crochet over here. So make sure that you're going right into this end stitch here. And if it's tight, just get your hook under there and work a single crochet. You're going to insert your hook into the next chain, work a single crochet, and if you're not sure where your stitch is on these chains, just follow that stitch up. Here's your puff stitch. We went right into the chain above that. Here's your next stitch. You're going right into the chain above that. Your puff stitch is here. You're going to follow it up and go into the next stitch here. So just look at your work and you can see those chain stitches on the top of your work. Insert into the next chain and work a single crochet. Insert into the next chain and work a single crochet. Continue working one single crochet in each chain on the bottom of the foundation chain across to the next corner and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the bottom of the foundation chain on our third side of our border. I worked one single crochet in each chain across the bottom of our rug and now we're getting ready to work down the length. And we're going to repeat exactly what we did on the other side. To work down the length, we're going to chain two for our turning corner. One, two. You're going to turn your rug and then we're going to be working down the length. We're going to insert our hook into the same space as this last single crochet and work a single crochet. What we're doing is we're working right over the end of that stitch 
and we're starting to go down the other side. We're going to work one single crochet in each row and stitch down the length. Insert into the next row and stitch, work a single crochet, insert into the next row and stitch, work a single crochet, and the row end stitches should be pretty easy to see. You'll see these openings and if you're not sure just stretch your work and you can see how those row end stitches open right up for you. So insert into the next row end stitch, work a single crochet, insert into the next row end stitch, work a single crochet, and continue working one single crochet in each row and stitch down to the next corner. I'll meet you there and show you how to join. I'm over at the end of round one border and you can see we have that single crochet going down one end, across the bottom, across our other end, and then across the top. So now we're getting ready to join our round. We're going to end our round with a chain two, one, two and this forms our last and fourth corner and then we're going to come up and we're going to slip stitch into the top of that beginning single crochet. So when you go to join make sure you're going into the top of the first single crochet and not into that chain one space. So when you look at your work this is your chain one space you're going underneath the top two loops of that first single crochet. Insert your hook yarn over the hook, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. You just slip stitched round one together. So for round two, we're going to go ahead and begin our round. We're going to start with a chain one. You're going to insert into that very same stitch, that first single crochet where you joined, and work a single crochet. You're going to work one single crochet in each single crochet across to the next corner chain two space. So insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet, continue working one single crochet in each stitch across until you get to that chain two space and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the end of the first side of round two border. We're over to our chain two space of where we formed our corner. So you end with a single crochet into the last single crochet across that side. And now we're going to work three single crochet into this corner chain two space. Insert into that corner chain two and work three single crochet. There's one insert into that same corner chain two space, work your second single crochet, that's two, insert into that same corner chain two space, and work your third single crochet. Your three single crochet form your turning corner. Now you're going to insert your hook, this is the start of the repeat. You're going to insert and work one single crochet in each stitch down the side of your rug until you get to the next corner chain two space. You're going to work three single crochet into each corner chain two space. Single crochet in each stitch across until you get to the next corner chain two space and then work three single crochet. When you come across to your last and final side You'll work three single crochet into this last corner chain two space, and I'll meet you there. I'm back, and I'm over at the end of round two, and I'm getting ready to join. So you should have two rounds of single crochet around your rug. I'm going to fasten off. Now, if you want to make your border wider, you can choose to use double crochet, or you can choose to keep working single crochet around your rug until you get the border the width you want. I'm going to come up and we're going to skip that beginning chain one. You're going to go over to the top of that first single crochet, insert your hook in the top of that stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. I'm going to fasten off, and then I chain two, one, 
to. I pull my hook out, grab that yarn, use your fingers, pull down, and it knots a really secure knot. And then you just turn this over and weave it in the back. This is what it should look like with your border. Now the side will look a little narrower than the top and bottom. It's just the way the pattern is. So this is our rug. Now, when you make a crocheted rug, you must put a backing on it or a under rug alignment. Because what happens is if you put this on a tile floor and if you would get out of the shower and you would step on that rug, you may end up falling and that is because it's so slippery. If you have carpet, then you're fine. It won't slide on carpet, but if you have a tile or wood floor, now I got this rug underlay at the Dollar Tree and this package was only a dollar. And this is 18 by 28, so it's the perfect size to fit under this rug. Even though this rug is a little bit bigger, it's enough to hold it in place. So I'm just going to measure my final piece it's 22 inches by 30 and a half inches. Now yours may vary depending on your stitch gauge of whether you crochet tight or loose. So I'll be right back and I'll show you the finished rug. Our rug is finished. This is the finished piece. It has a very nice textured look. I'm going to zoom right up so you can see that texture. Big puffy stitches when you get out of the bath or shower to just nice and soft and cushiony on your toes. So I finished this. Now again, you can make that border wider by using double crochet or just keep single crocheting with the outside border color. You can increase the size of your rug. You can decrease the size. You can make this a runner. So many possibilities for your home decor. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, this is pattern number 701. The link is in my description box. And until next time, happy crocheting everyone.